All right, this narration is uh, about the effects of the uh, September 16th, 2010's uh, tornado at the OARDC and Seacrest Arboretum. In preliminary, to look at things preliminarily, let's look at what happened in the Arboretum with a new building that we just started teaching from uh, six days earlier before the tornado. So a, a plant diagnostic workshop, beautiful new building. We talked about the fact that this changed everything in terms of being out in the Arboretum, it welcomed people in. You could really see uh, the reflections in the glass and see outside. You were really in the Arboretum and you could walk out into the Arboretum and it changed everything from having it be right where the trees were for people at the program. Here are Dave Nielsen and Fred Robinson who had come years and years ago, some uh, 25 years ago, to our first plant diagnostic workshops here with OSU Extension. And here they're coming for the 70th workshop, sometimes two or three a year that we do, arriving and they come right out of the Arboretum into this wonderful, wonderful teaching room. Here are Joe Boggs, OSU Extension Educator from Hamilton County, is, is doing our 21 questions of plant diagnostics, so he's teaching. And again, you can see how this just goes out into the Arboretum. Again, this building only been in service for a couple of months, the Jack and Deb Miller Garden Pavilion in the Arboretum. Just uh, for perspective's sake, and you'll see more about this later, but here's on the one co in each corner of the building were these nice little succulent and cactus uh, plantings. Uh, and so again, this is six days before September 16th, on September 10th, before the tornado arrived. Here, out in the Arboretum, at the end of the day, we went for a walk. Joe Boggs teaching uh, his entomology materials down in the uh, Streeter Amphitheater, and you can see that people are paying attention, and again, this wonderful teaching area for the Arboretum. Here you see a picture of another building that's fairly new on campus. Uh, it's uh, dedicated the year before, the Nielsen, the Dave Nielsen and Dan Herms Pavilion, the Phenology Pavilion, really talking also about research at OARDC, the Discovery Pavilion, and you see the beautiful work with the wood at the top of this. And again, there's a reason to show this again, uh, six days before the tornado. All right, here the tornado came through on 916 around 530 and this is one day later and uh, these pictures show kind of what campus started to look like at that point. And you can see here the Wayne County Command and Communications, some of the uh, organization of the effort with the uh, security people that are occurring that day and for those of people who have been in that Fisher Auditorium parking lot, these wonderful London plane trees that graced there, that was one of the first things I saw as uh, coming into the Arboretum uh, from over near the ATI area and saw that those trees just simply lost their tops. So the, the, her the tornado roared in, uh, knocked down Green Thumb uh, Garden Center across the way and crossed uh, Madison Avenue and came in past the uh, research services building and really wrapped right into these trees. This is just a picture of an urban elm and the kind of uh, uh, uprooting of root systems that occurred for large trees in the Arboretum uh, on 916. These dates that are here with the captions on these uh, images in this PowerPoint are the days the pictures were actually taken. So this is one day later. Here was very early. This is the first time I had a chance to uh, really walk with uh, Ken Cochran in the Arboretum and we took about a five hour walk on that day after the the tornado came in and really looked at things and uh, communed together about things. Here Bernie Huff who is our Don Redwood ambassador is arriving expressing his thoughts to Ken and, and also wanting to know ultimately what happened to his, his beloved Don Redwood grow which survived intact. That Don Redwood, Redwood Grove uh, that Bernie loves, to the west of it, to the east of it, to the north and south of it. Devastation. The Don Redwood Grove was intact, however. So probably not because it had the strongest trees, just the, uh, the vagaries of how that tornado was hopping around. And you can see here Ken's got some stress on his, on his, his face here as he's starting to look at these things in his, really for the second time after he saw it the night of the a tornado. Here is where people typically come into the Arboretum in springtime to see the crab apples along the road and you see the kind of devastation that you have. Now remember that slide earlier where you saw the top uh, woodwork inside the Discovery Pavilion. 
the Discovery Pavilion is something that is out there and intact. A few little uh, displays knocked off their hinges, but uh, that building was perfectly intact, maybe partially because it had open doors. And uh, it sits out there and can be seen from main campus where you couldn't see it before from main campus because of trees. And you can be at the Discovery Pavilion uh, there with its nice little roof back toward campus now where you couldn't really see the clarity as you, you, that you now do because of the loss of things. But you see the devastation along that road that people come into the Arboretum as they move through the OARD, at past the OARDC campus. The Stone House and damage to its roof, but uh, and a lot of damage to the landscape and trees around it, and some of the construction material that's already in there the day after uh, the tornado. Here again, the destruction, a beautiful sycamore forest really area that you're seeing uh, with just a few surviving stems coming up there. Uh, they're all gone now in terms of the, uh, the, the, uh, the work that had to be done with the heavy equipment in that, that area, and you see a lot of the debris that's that's there as well. The old feed mill, and this uh, is Crablandia 1. Uh, the International Ornamental Crab Apple Society has their, uh, uh, their, their key plot here in Ohio. There's 18 plots around the country. Uh, and this is the biggest plot, although uh, we have a new one that you'll see later. This is Crablandia 1, the re place where we did research for about 15 years, and it's basically gone there by the old feed mill and just uh, ravaged through because this is where the tornado came in. Here's Crablandia 2 where we do our new research. We lost seven trees out of 385, so we only lost 2% in the new plot. The old plot and a lot of those trees along the road are gone. So, you know, it... it uh, some plants, uh, some, some arboretum features gone, some arboretum features preserved. Here is a rhododendron that was trying to get into the farm shop here as it was blown across the street from the stone house, and you see a crabapple branch there in front of it as well. Here you look at what was going on over at the stone house with the wind trying to blow that rhododendron across the road, and it did, except parts of that plant uh, survived and that layering effect that occurs under rhododendrons will mean that we will be able to preserve that rhododendron in front of the stone house. This is a, a, an interesting picture for arborist. We always talk about silver maples being amongst, amongst the poorest structured trees that they don't uh, grow, they grow fast and they really break in storms. You see the debris the day after the tornado in front of the farm shop where it stands basically undamaged next to a bunch of debris of other trees that went. So kind of an interesting Mother Nature uh, a twist here that it's one that survived. Now it is a cultivar that's a little unusual and has a little better structure, but for a silver maple to be there with all that other debris is kind of an interesting thing for arborists and horticulturalists. A wonderful rock out in the Arboretum where I know my children loved to play on that rock when they were small on a beautiful spruce woodlands that were a spruce uh, grove that was behind there and you see all those trees were basically knocked down. As you move into and this is an area that's hard to see especially for those who have just been uh, just been amazed by what Ken Cochran and Joe Cochran and their interns and the ground staff here at OARDC have been able to do out in Secret Star Breedham. All these new pathways and you see big trees and kind of where that tornado came through and hit a lot of the new areas of the Arboretum and the kind of damage that it looked like as you entered those new gardens on uh, on the, the day after on Friday. Ken and Joe Cochran, they are so responsible. They're great spirit and tremendous effort. Here's the next day. Joe's already out with his broom and starting to clean up, and they did a wonderful, I mean, they're just doing an incredible job getting things cleaned up. Of course, we have all kinds of people from all over the country who want to come in and really participate in this effort, but right now, uh, or but, you know, as of a week later, after the tornado, still in disaster administration status, so we can't have everybody come in. There's a, uh, a, 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 so, uh, but there are there's tremendous energy of people that care so much about the campus here and with oh, and with Secret Star Breeding that want to come in. But Joe and Ken are at it immediately. The water garden. Uh, Joe's favorite uh, beach, uh, favorite tree in the Arboretum, the Fernleaf Beach, came down. And he came in the next day, took all this, these trees that had fallen in the water garden and, uh, and you know, cleaned that all out. We ha our tree inventory group came in a couple days later, and it, we, it had already been cleaned out. And we had lunch there. But this was a tough one for him, and he is the one who wanted to clean up this area and, and chainsaw up the pieces of that fern leaf beach that had been there. And so I, I predict that uh, those kind of trees will be replaced as time goes on. Remember the Jack and Deb Miller Garden Pavilion that uh, we had the diagnostic workshop six days earlier from this uh, 
there it is. So that work, that building is gone. That new building is gone, and you see here the floor and a few little pieces of the puzzle left. But basically, that building is gone. And uh, the great wonder of this tornado, in many ways, was the one minor injury here on campus. Uh, nobody seriously hurt. If we would have been out there in that building, uh, in the time, in the quickness of how this tornado roared through here, we would have had only that building or running out into the Arboretum to go. So tremendously providential that we did not have the, the uh,